Michelle, that's me, y'all. I've constructed a life revolved around healing, growing, and evolving. I'm passionate about mental health, self-love, self-care, and self-exploration. I love music, emotional intelligence, dancing, anything nostalgic, personal concerts, twerking, and most of all, deep conversations. I'm so glad you're here. So let's talk. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the lessons, okay? So none of it was in vain. But anyways, I'm gonna be sharing some of my lessons with you guys. Never, ever, ever, ever go through someone's phone. It is very, very, very toxic. If you feel like this person is not being honest with you, and you've tried to have a conversation with this person and they're dismissive, then this could be an indication that maybe this is not the person for you. If you suspect that this person is cheating on you and they're not open, if they're not trying to reassure you, then they're probably cheating, okay? They're probably cheating. Now, if you're going through this person's phone is stemming from an insecurity, that person that you're with should still be loving around the conversation. They should not try and tear you down. They should not try and gaslight you because your feelings are valid. And so that person should ensure that wherever this is coming from, even if it has nothing to do with their actions, they're providing an environment to be able to have a healthy conversation okay all of us have our little nuances some of us have baggage from past relationships but your partner should be there to reassure you okay if they're not it could mean that they're hiding something but at the end of the day we cannot control other people we can only control ourselves and so if you feel like this person is not being honest with you do not go through their phone because it could really, really hinder the relationship and it could also cause distrust within the relationship. Have a conversation, but don't go through their phone. Don't sweat the small stuff. If it's a small minor issue and it's not something that is a big issue, don't sweat it. So say for instance, if it's something like your boo said something that annoyed you. Don't feel like you have to talk about every single little thing. At the end of the day, you're coming in with somebody. They have their own personality. You have your own personality. You're not perfect. They're not perfect. They're gonna do stuff that annoys you sometimes. And sometimes you just gotta let stuff go. But pick and choose when it is worth the conversation. Now, I'm not saying suppress your feelings. That's not what I'm saying. Because if it's an issue and it's causing your feelings to be very, very strong, then it probably means that it's worth a conversation. But don't feel as if you have to address every little thing, okay? You cannot change anyone and you should never, ever, 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 ever exert your energy into trying to change a person. The only person's actions that you are responsible for are your own. You are gonna drive yourself crazy trying to change a person. I don't care what good you see in this person, what potential you see in this person, how much you love this person. Do not try and change them, okay? When you're dating a person and you're getting to know them, determine what their flaws are, determine what their nuances are, determine what things annoy you, and at the very beginning, determine if these are three things that you would be able to deal with if they never change them. If those things are deal breakers for you, don't get into the relationship because you're literally going to be getting into the relationship with the hope that this person changes and there is no guarantee that they will. So you either accept it or you decide to leave the situation or never get in the relationship to begin with. Never, ever, ever get in a relationship with potential. You will be very, very, very disappointed. This is mainly for the women, but never, ever, ever put yourself in a position to play pick me. Never, ever put yourself in a position to feel like you have to prove yourself, prove your worth, or compete with anyone else. If a man is putting you in that position to have to do any of those things, girl, no, absolutely not. Don't even 
don't even don't even fall for it you are the prize okay you are the absolute prize it's nothing wrong with flaunting your femininity in fact you should do that but never ever put yourself in a position to play pick me or feel like you have to prove yourself to a man absolutely not we do not prove ourselves to men let people be their natural selves when you are getting to know someone never tell them what you are looking for in a partner just say simply i value authenticity and i allow people to just be themselves if he says something like yeah me and my ex from seven years ago we still kick it we still hang out run run why why are you still having a relationship with that thing and same thing for a girl yeah me and my ex we're still cool we still hang out we still kick it we're like best friends for what? Why, why, why do we have a relationship with old vomit? Leave it in the past. No matter how good of a man or a woman you are, you are never going to be good enough for a man or a woman that is not ready. If they are not ready for a relationship, do not try and force it. If they tell you that they're not ready, then you need to respect that and walk away. There is no such thing as a perfect partner. I believe in the 80-20 rule, which says that there is probably going to be 80% of what you want in your partner and the 20% are probably gonna be things that you don't really like. And so you have to determine what things are your deal breakers, what are your standards, what are your non-negotiables. If that 20% contains non-negotiables, then don't date this person. This person bringing you peace is important. If that is part of your non-negotiable, then go with that. If looks are important to you, don't feel shallow. It's not, then go with that. But just understand that there is no perfect person. And if you continue to look for a perfect person, you're gonna find that your efforts are gonna be futile because there is no perfect person. You have to figure out what your non-negotiables are, what your standards are, and does this person meet my needs? I ain't saying settle, but I'm saying recognize that no one is perfect and you determine what settling is. Be willing to have the hard conversations. What I mean by that is in order for a relationship to work, you have to be willing to have the hard conversations. It is so important. Having hard conversations requires a level of vulnerability that a lot of people do not like, but in order for that relationship to stand and in order for intimacy to happen, you have to be willing to have the hard conversations, baby. And when you do, listen just as much as you talk. You have two ears and one mouth. Learn your partner's love languages oh my freaking gosh if you have not heard of a love language sis bro go look that up right now it's gonna change your relationship life as humans we love the way that we like to be loved i'm someone that values words of affirmation i love words of affirmation and so that is the way that i usually go to love people I love giving people cards. I love sending them thoughtful text messages because that is the way that I love. However, for someone that I'm dating, their first love language may be quality time. Understanding this is important because that can cause a lot of breakdown in a relationship if your partner feels as if they're neglected in a certain area because they like to be loved the way that they like to be loved and you like to be loved the way that you like to be loved. So understand your partner's love language oh my gosh that's gonna change your date in life up baby be the version of yourself that you want to attract say for instance if you want somebody that's emotionally intelligent how are you when somebody pisses you off do you resort to cutting them off or are you committed to working out the problem and having the hard conversations. If you want someone that's emotionally intelligent, then become that. If you want someone that's business oriented, then become that. If you want someone that's physically fit, then become that. If you want someone that is financially stable, then become that. It is shallow for someone to want someone to be something, but you don't, you're not that. I can't stand it when a man is like, oh, I want my wife to be fit. She gotta be this, she gotta go to the gym. But what are you doing? Do you go to the gym? Okay then, you, you, can't, you can't have somebody that be going to the gym if you're not even doing that. 
Look at your lifestyle. Are you a person that wakes up late? Do you want somebody that wakes up early? Are you that person that wakes up early? If you are not, then become that. Do you eat french fries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Do you want someone that takes care of their body? Then become that. Become what you want to attract. Fellas, don't feel like you have to break the bank when you first meet a woman, okay? Brunch is cool. And if she respects you and she wants to get to know you, then she'll be open to that. Here are some important questions to ask people when you are considering whether or not they would be a good potential mate. What are your goals long-term and short-term? What does happiness look like for you? What does your happiest life look like? What do you do when you are extremely sad? Biggest lesson that I've learned is do not let love consume you. Do not get me wrong. Love is beautiful when it is healthy. However, there is more to life than just a romantic relationship. What are your dreams? What are your goals? What is your purpose? Go after your purpose. Become a better person. When you're in your purpose, the person that you're supposed to be with, you will ultimately attract. You won't even have to look for it. It will come to you. It's gonna fall in your lap. So don't let love consume you. Understand that a romantic relationship is just one portion of your life. The person that you are with should never ever complete you. You should be happy, you should be full within yourself. And I'm not saying full as in perfection, but what I'm saying is perfectly content within yourself with being alone and allow the person that you're with to compliment you, not to complete you, compliment, not. Seek personal and internal happiness and fulfillment first. If you are happy internally, it is easy to attract the right person. When you're in purpose, it's easy to attract the right person. Allow that person to compliment you and not complete you.